In this video, we're going to be looking at how jQuery accomplishes the AJAX calls. So I've got this sample page here where I've attached the jQuery 1.8 script to the page. I've got my own jQuery AJAX JavaScript file. That's my uh, file over here, which we'll look at in just a moment. And in the HTML, I have a wrapper div, there's a heading, and I've got a div where I'm going to be placing the output. So I've given it an ID just to make it easy to target where we're going to place the information that comes from our data file. This is the data file that we're going to load. Very simple XML. Root tag is called data. Inside that we have a red tag and a blue tag. Inside the red tag there's a series of items. Inside the blue tag there's a series of items. So there's five of these red ones, five of these blue ones. All right, so let's look at the JavaScript file. We have a global variable here called data. That's what we're going to store our data from the server inside of. We should give it a default value of null. Now, the reason I do this is once the data has been retrieved one time, I will take the data, place it inside of this variable, and then I can use that as a test to see whether or not I've already fetched the data. Because as soon as I put the data in here, it's no longer going to be null. As you can see down here in line 10, there's my check to see if data equals null. If it is null, then we know that we have not fetched the data yet. If it's anything other than null, it means I've put something in there, so it is no longer null. All right, so let's take a look at the Ajax call from jQuery. We start off with our dollar sign, that's our jQuery object, and the method that we're going to use first of all is going to be called Ajax. You can see there's a set of round brackets here. These parentheses, that's attached to the word Ajax, that is our method call. Inside there for the Ajax call there's one object, so we've got an opening and closing curly brace. The object is called URL, and or the first property inside the object is going to be called URL, and this is the name of the file that we're going to fetch. I'm going to retrieve, be retrieving a file called sampledata1.xml, so that is the URL. If there were a folder name, I'd put that in front of the name. If it was coming from the server and I wanted to specify starting with HTTP, I could do that as well. We do have the security restriction that it does have to be from the same domain, but beyond that we can pretty much type anything we want. Second parameter, type. What kind of request do we want to make? Is it get or is it post? With get, we have to be careful because the results can be cached, meaning every time we call we get the same file because we're requesting the same file. So we get a cached copy instead of the latest version from the server. With post I'm ensured that I'm always going to be getting the latest copy. Data type, well this is the kind of file that we expect to be getting back. Now I'm expecting to get an XML file so I'm going to say data type is XML. If I don't put the data type in there jQuery is going to make its best guess, based on the MIME type coming back from the server, what this is. And it's fairly good, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to specify that, and I'm going to say that the data type is explicitly XML. Now, for the event handlers, I need to know whether or not this AJAX call worked or didn't work. So there's two methods I'm going to add. One called done and one called fail. Pretty simple. The done one is going to work if this thing worked. The fail one is going to run if it fails. So on my page already I've created a couple of functions. One called good XML and one called fail XML. Those are functions I've got further down on the page. These are going to be my links to that. Okay, so I'll scroll down here. Here's my two functions, good XML and fail XML. In the good XML, the first parameter provided is going to be the data that came back. 
in this case that is my XML file and you can see I've already put it inside here that this is going to be placed inside of that global variable called data which I can use at a later time to find out whether or not this was actually retrieved already fail XML is going to provide me with the jQuery XML HTTP request object so that's basically the the object that made the Ajax call text status is the message coming back it's jQuery's kind of message to you to tell you why it failed what was the problem that kind of thing All right, so in here we could put an alert message say Ajax failed due to something and we'll just take whatever the text status says and we'll write that out alright that gives us enough for the fail now for the success version of this what I want to do is create two versions of the same script in the first one I'm going to use the get elements by tag name method to show you how to get data out of the XML and the second one I'm going to do the jQuery equivalent of that so first of all we will create a variable here called red count and that is going to be the number of items inside the red section and then I'll create a second variable called blue count which will be the same the number of items but inside of the blue tag instead all right data my global variable that is the contents of the XML file same way we would in HTML do get elements by tag name red I want to get the very first one and then again call get elements by tag name item that will give me all of them so this is all of the item tags inside the first red tag on the page and since it's an array I'm going to ask for the length property that will give me the number of item tags inside of the red tag for the second one for the blue count we just have to change this name to blue there we go it's the exact same code go find the blue tag get the first one from the list of blue tags look inside that find all the item tags get the length of that array of item tags then to put it on the page we'll use jQuery to do that because it's much shorter so inside the output I'm going to append now we could create some HTML elements and put them inside here from inside of a variable but instead of doing that I'm going to write out what the HTML is that I want to put so I'm going to say there are red count red items and blue count blue items on the page or rather in the XML okay so this is the HTML string that I want to put simple enough we can uh, actually we can save that we can take a look in the browser there we go I load the page oh, yeah will do that sometimes if you're testing multiple times in the in the browser sometimes you will get that actually there's quite possibly a JavaScript error here so I'm going to take a look at the JavaScript ah, there it is in the JavaScript console no method get elements tag name I forgot the by get elements by tag name so that was a typo you probably noticed in the code as I was writing it so down in here we'll fix that mistake by tag name, save it, jump back to the browser, try this again. There it is. There are five red items and five blue items. Perfect, that's what we wanted to see. All right, now I want to do the exact same thing as this, except do it in the shorter jQuery way. All right, now we are going to be creating the variable red count again. We're going to be creating the variable blue count again because we're trying to duplicate this. I'll be using the jQuery output dot append method. 
Now the difference in here is really just how I create these variables. We have the object data. I can put that inside of this. Basically, I can turn data into a jQuery object. So it's going to take all of the XML that's stored inside of data, treat it as if it were HTML, and turn it into a jQuery object. Now, that gives me the root tag, all the contents of the root tag. There's a jQuery method called find, where I can say, get all the red tags. Or I could say, find all the items inside the red tag. So find all the blue items, and then find the item tags inside the blue ones. OK, find red item, find blue item. And then there's a method called size, which will get for me the count. So it's going to be doing the exact same thing as the one up here. I can just copy and paste this HTML. Save that. Jump back to our browser. Reload the page. There we go. It's written twice. And I'll just I'll refresh it again. There we go. There it is again. So built from scratch. Comes up twice. First time is the basic JavaScript way, this time using the jQuery find method. So it's a little bit shorter. It's just an alternative for us. Now our last step is that I want to come back in here and beyond putting in just the count of the items, I want to actually write out what the text was inside of these things. If I look at the XML file, I want to write out apples, lipstick, cherries, strawberries, hot tamales, water, blueberries, Viagra, blue moon, and blue cheese. I want to write those words out. So I'm going to jump back in here. I'll start with the same idea. I will convert data into a jQuery object. I will then use the find to get the red item tags. Now I have, it's like an array inside of jQuery of all the item tags that are inside of the red. I'm going to use the each method on these. There we go. So the each method has a function inside of it, and this function is going to add some stuff to the output tag, just like we were doing before. And I'm going to append to that some new HTML. So there'll be a paragraph tag and at the end a closing paragraph tag. Just like that. Inside of here, what I want to do is I want to get the text from each of those things. Inside the each function we can use this to point at each one of those item tags. If I'm looking at these item tags inside of red, this represents an item tag, one at a time. Now, it's not the whole tag. I don't want the object. What I want is the text that's inside of it. So I will call the text method. That will write out each one of those. So I can do that for red. I can do that for blue. There we go. Jump back over here. Reload this, get the expected Ajax error. Always happens the first time. There we go. Apples, lipstick, cherries, strawberries, hot tamales, and then the blue items. So we're getting all of our items, just as we expected.